the hardest money that has ever been in money. I also made the case for winning Bitcoin, the quintessence of scarcity premium. Scarcity premium. It's literally the only large tradable asset in the world that has a known fixed maximum supply by its design. The total quantity of Bitcoins cannot exceed 21 million. Bitcoin is the hardest money that has ever been invented. If you don't have my private key, you cannot spend my Bitcoin, period. And this is the power of Bitcoin. This is the power of Bitcoin. This is the first time we figured out how to create true property that you can take possession of with full custodial rights. What's going on, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Talking to Bits, where we walk you through Bitcoin bit by bit so we can provide you with the information you need to succeed and persist. Back where episode 47 got Ben in the house as always. I thought you was going to say 46, bro. I do be messing that up, man. I'm going to have to hand that over to you so you can start handling that, man. But how's everything, man? Things are good, man. It doesn't matter what, what episode we're on. It's, hey, give me yo, more. Here's, here's another week. We're going to tell you things that are going to happen in the future because we're seeing trends. Like, we're identifying what's going on in Bitcoin. I say any any week, any day that Craig Wright owes over 100 mil, Whew. we're doing well. I got to look into that whole case, man. For being a doofus. I know minimal on that. <laughs> he he tried saying he was Satoshi. He tried saying he was Satoshi. And he tried Satoshi. saying he had an address with the stash. Yeah, no, he just tried to basically say anything that comes with that. I don't know the exact details, but he has ownership of all the Satoshi's work. So he owns Bitcoin. He owns all that. So yeah, he owns the original purse, if you want to use that term. All that stuff. Yeah, and patent. he started like suing developers and everything. I like Like people that, that couldn't afford to keep up with him. In court. Bro, I saw that. But as things always tend to, to be, and we, yeah. always, we always say the Max Kaiser thing, sucking the poison out of things. Yeah. You know, if, liars. I'm, if I'm Kaiser, I'm I'm getting him the best attorney. What do you mean? If I'm an OG Bitcoiner. Getting who? The developers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm making yeah. sure that like their defense team is top notch. Yeah, I think a lot of the Bitcoiners you know I mean? actually, you know, did support and did do, I you know, so. th their best work. And, and yeah. it was a common thing. I think even McCormick is part of that lawsuit, ironically enough. So. I saw some of that. Yeah, like there's a lot of back and forth, but he's a doofus, right? He, like, and now you're a doofus that's short because you're a hundred million in debt from all your fees and lawyer fees. And then there's so-called purse or address that you claim you own. You don't have access to. You don't. What? Like, if it's yours, show me the keys, bro. What's wrong with this guy? Like, so, just do just do a test transaction. So, yeah, this is my address. So to Bomb. me, once again, you're a doofus and Bitcoin yeah. is great every single day <laughs> that Craig Wright owes over $100 million. What a doofus. If I'm thinking of block size wars... That's the this only is, word I can think about. This him. is like when Bitcoin wins another battle. You know what I mean? Like the whole big blocker thing. This is yeah, like the fork. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? yeah, yeah. No, and long overdue. I think he dragged yeah. this because he had the pockets to, to drag it in court. I think he long overdue. So I, I like you, am not 100% familiar with the case, but I think it's nailed in. I think yeah. he got his winning verdict, which yeah. actually is not a winning verdict if you owe $100 million. <laughs> uh, but he got somehow, some way, something that didn't do anything to Bitcoin because Bitcoin doesn't care. And I think for like the fifth or sixth time, I got to call him a doofus again. I, that's the only word I can think of. Like, there's certain people, this is him. But... Anyways, I didn't want to get going there. This whole theme of, of, of this episode, I wanted it to definitely be, you know, New Year's resolution to, like, take your keys, man. Take, we talk about it all the time. <laughs> take ownership Yo. of your Bitcoin. Get it off exchanges. Yeah. I wanted the trend to this episode to kind of be that. Yeah, man. In my group, I, uh, someone had posted uh, Layered Money where it was talking about the gold exchange or the gold seizure. Yep. And I was like, hey, the year's 2025. The government just announced you need to, or, or that they've... Uh, basically taking your coin if it was on an exchange. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's a stick up. Like that can't happen if it's in your possession. Yeah, that's funny you should say that. So I have a link here to, to Marty Bent who retweeted somebody called Jason Lowry. I, mm -hmm. I don't know the details of who this person is, but yeah. I've been following him for a little bit. Something along that veins of like yeah. what happens with an executive order 6102 where yeah. like companies like Nidig, Coinbase, Grayscale, BlockFi, have to base a thousand percent. I don't, they, they're the ones that Robin would, Hood, they're the ones that would comply. They're the ones that would be like, yes, please. Robin yes. Hood, PayPal, bro. Like, yeah, so like Basically, the government makes them use government regulated, you know, uh, custody solutions mm -hmm. and then pulls it out the bag and says, all right, everything that belongs to us belongs to us. This can happen. This is just another reminder. You, you got to You got to get it off the exchange. So uh, increasingly more interesting in that somebody actually did the math of, of what it would be like to, to, to get all the Bitcoin off of Coinbase. And I kind of want to be hundred coins, right? I don't know. Let me read this detail. Yeah. But when I was reading it, I was like, interesting. I love Bitcoiners. I love mm -hmm. people that just like sit down and do math mm -hmm. on, on complicated things. But this person said, and, and shout out to, it looks like Ill Capital, um, 3 Capital. Uh, either way, shout out to you for this post. But Coinbase has 73 million users. If 50 million of them own Bitcoin and we can fit 
basically 4,000 transactions per block, per output or whatever, it would take 12,500 blocks to withdraw all the coins from Coinbase. For, you know, y'all that don't know what, you know, the time chain is and the blocks and, and, and that time, that would be about 87 days when it comes to Bitcoin time or, you know, blocks being drawn up time. So Three right months. now, if you guys got to it, Three we, months, man. We've already done this. So, yeah. like, you guys got to get to it. <laughs> yeah, just just for context there. Okay. Yep. Mike, uh, MicroStrategy bought, I don't know, thousands of coins at this point. That's one corporation. Mass Mutual, Springfield Insurance. Right. They made a $100 purchase last year. Once 10 or 20 big companies say, hey, we're going to commit $100 million, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and, coin is gone. Well, the price of it is going to go through the selling. And then he yeah. actually posted, so I'll go ahead and withdraw or be willing to pay a thousand dollars per fee it. to get your coin out. Crazy. That is nuts. I've seen smaller stuff with my experience with BlockFi, not a thousand dollars, of course, but like this weird, like, here's an email with your receipt and like four or six paragraphs underneath on what they can do <laughs> if they so cho- well choose to do so. Like, you know, I've been lucky, I guess. I slid by. Count me out. But it's like, what is this? Like, I'm not even, what kind of choice is this? Yeah, count like, me out. That, that's a bank product. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If fiat minded, we've talked about it plenty of times, but I think that's extremely interesting. And, and I think interesting, and I think that's why, as we talk about all the time, you need to just get some keys. Like, this is, you know, I, I hate to like get now like real pushy about it, but like, this <laughs> yeah. isn't difficult. Like, yeah. you, you can get a treasure if you want simplicity, you can get a code card if you want, you know, to feel like a badass and have complexity, you can get a ledger and still do these things correctly. Um, somebody said it a little while ago, uh, it's a signing device. It's really what it is. Like you just have to get your hands on some private keys, the device will generate it for you. And then you have this device to be able to sign transactions, but you need to take ownership of the keys. Anybody that still comes around, in my opinion, unless they're really new, um, and it's easy to tell when somebody's really new, Mm -hmm. but if somebody continues to beat around the bush and try to claim that it's not so safe to put, you know, key baloney, run the other way. Run the other way. We just gave you another reason. You've been listening to 46 episodes of us tell you that you need to have your keys. We've given example after example. And not just us. Bitcoiners do this all day. It's like, just what happens. It, right. Yeah. It's like, let, don't let history slide Mount, by you. Mount Gox. Like, it's he, just what happens, bro. Yeah, but like, just like in real life history, people seem like these things can't happen. And, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. And in my in my situation is, is we, we talked about, you know, uh, Dr. Bitcoin. It's like, look, just get one. Just get one. Like, let's start this. You'll, you'll learn once you get invested because you have, like, you know what people say? Like, you have a stake in it. You have your foot mm-hmm. in the door. Now you're interested. Start there. Just get, like, whatever, a ledger. Get whatever it is. Treasure, fundamentally, listen, the treasure is a solid device. It does what it needs to do. The ledger is a solid device. I just don't like that business's practices. Um, and obviously, you can call these people out to court. Uh, well, people's court for being like a multiple shitcoin company, right? Mm. Like supporting different coins and different NFTs, aspects. different coins. Yeah, just doing different things. So obviously you're just like, eh, it's a sour taste if you're a real Bitcoiner, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Getting your keys, it's much more important than being egotistical about what you do. Sure. Now, if you want to go directly with what we recommend, pure Bitcoin companies, then code card, passport. I think that's a very small, odd, like a, a collection of devices there. There's one in mind. I forget the name of it. The dude is based out of Boston though. I was looking at Interesting. it. It's, it almost looks like a cell phone device. It's open That's source. A passport. Is that a passport? Yeah, okay, I believe okay. so. Yeah. yeah and, it looks like a, almost like a small Nokia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully it has the lifespan yeah. of a Nokia. But yeah. Yeah. No, that, I believe that's a passport. People okay, love cool, that thing. Cool, cool. I, uh, I, I want to order one. When it comes it to mul- cool. multi sig, like seed signers, like mm-hmm. I've been seeing people build their own seed signers. Like it's like 50 bucks and you get like mm-hmm. this nice cool kit that looks like an orange pill, which is fantastic. <laughs> and you can actually sign multi sig transactions that's and do branding. these various things. There's just so many things out there for people to just like do it. Not want to do it. Not want to do it. Yeah. Right. And then naturally, when you get your feet wet, you're going to start, you know, I- experimenting with what you can do with this. And then, in my experience, multi signature just naturally comes next. It's just one of those things where it's like you, you, you get, you get, it, it makes sense to say, because it's very nerve wracking to have one device, right? And be like, yo, damn, but this is a single point of failure. Like, what happens? I, I know I've, I've done this and everybody does this. You start building these like, extreme scenarios that what happens if the house burns down the dog burns down the car burns down the you know at the simultaneous the bank burns down like we start getting on this bag so it's like i get that and then you start figuring out multi-sig like does this Mm -hmm. like it allows for the house to burn and the car to burn and the other thing to burn but then you can still have an extra two set of keys somewhere else yeah and you know back to satoshi's genius is just to be able to like think about that ahead of time and say like no this is an implementation. This is something that needs to happen. 
I, I will be lying though to say that I don't know if multi-sig was part of like the original thing or if it was one of those. It's the, probably an add-on. One of those BIPs or whatever, the yeah, BIPs yeah. or whatever. I don't know, but yeah. that's why I think it's important for us to be able to get somebody who knows this information. Yeah. Right? Somebody that, that, that can talk to us about it. So I'm going to go through the phone here and I'm going to reach out to see if who I'm thinking of here is actually going to be able to jump on this call with us. And cool. if they can, that'll be extremely dope. Let's figure it out here. Yeah, someone had posted, um, if you haven't memorized your key, you don't own it. If you memorize your key, you don't own it. That's if, different. If you haven't memorized your key, you don't own it. Yeah. yeah. That's actually true, like by definition, right? Yeah. Uh, but, all right. I'm going to so, commit to that. That's interesting. Yeah, and that's yeah. the way you can really be un, 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 ungovernable, <laughs> unfuckable. Um, yeah. But anyways, so who I reached out to, man, uh, Tyler Campbell, he's technical director uh, at Concierge over at Unchained Capital. Um, I've been in the presence of being able to listen to this gentleman be able to explain Bitcoin in and, and, and such a great fashion. I told you this mm. before the show. I told this to him. And the next six months to come give him some time, I think he's going to be one of the foremost educators in the space when it comes to Bitcoin, especially when it comes to custody and multi-sig. Uh, and I've had preview to that. So if he can jump in here, um, that'll be fantastic. And, and, and we could talk to him about multi-sig and stuff. But I'm, I'm just about, like I told you before we started this show, I'm just about there when it comes to people like making excuses for not being able to hold your keys. I know it's tough, but if you want that sovereignty, if you want that feeling of actually owning it, then you got to actually own it. Hey, and here we got, we got Tyler coming in. Fantastic. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Tyler, Perfect. I just told the people here that we were going to reach out to you. Gave you a little bit of a soft introduction there. Um, thank you for joining us first and foremost. I appreciate you taking that spot on. Um, and let the people know a little bit about yourself before we get into some multi-sig, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, you know, first and foremost, thank you for having me on. Uh, so my name is Tyler Campbell. I'm the technical director of the concierge service here at Unchained Capital. Um, been working at Unchained since about early June, first week of June. So uh, massive growth in the company since then, massive growth in just kind of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Um, but as you both probably know, you know, one year in Bitcoin is like five. So it's been uh, it's been <laughs> quite the journey since then. Um, but uh, traditionally, you know, grew up uh, just south of Madison, Wisconsin. I uh, went to university up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, spent some time in the Twin Cities. Uh, shout out to the Minneapolis Bitcoiner crew. Uh, led by Brandon Quidham up there. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really solid crew. We have uh, some Minneapolis uh, folks on the team here at Unchained as well. So uh, spent some time there, about seven years, and then just recently moved down to Austin as a part of uh, working with Unchained. It's been pretty awesome. Yeah, and shout out to uh, Brandon Quidham, by the way. I listened to his recent McCormick podcast, and uh, I'm actually reading the fourth turning right now. And it's like, mind-blowing <laughs> it's crazy my mind-blowing stuff and way too many correlations but um awesome man thanks again for joining us I, I i just said what i told you and ben a little while ago which is i think in the next six months probably even faster than that since you just said bitcoin time is so fast like you, you're going to be one of those foremost educators in the space uh and what i mean by that is there's a cast of people that go on twitter and actually dedicate their time to educate with no incentive in, into play, right? No, like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to hit you in the DM and try to take a little bit of money from you. I'll ask you for some change or something like that. Right. You just genuinely do this. Yeah, it's I like, appreciate that. you know, most people, like, uh, you get the scam bots in the DMs. Yeah, how's your trade going? And I'm, I'm out there, uh, you know, how's your security going? <laughs> I'm like, nothing in it for me, you know? <laughs> Those are two like very it. different questions. I like it. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I think it's important that we ultimately start with your Bitcoin story, Tyler. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we all have one. We're all Bitcoiners. Give us, give us what your story is, if you don't mind. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so uh, I was kind of in, you know, coming up through the university system um, during kind of Bitcoin's first rise towards, you know, being discussed in, in popular discourse, right? Uh, there's economist articles about it. It kind of already hit uh, the quote unquote mainstream. I mean, it was being talked about. It wasn't just on the Bitcoin talk forums. So that was around uh, 2012 through 2016 era. Um, and it had heard about Bitcoin um, as most college kids do as a means to, you know, obtain stuff while you could use it as a currency. Um, and Seeing it from that perspective was kind of interesting. It's like, okay, this 
this is a good that can be exchanged and it's digital, but I didn't know the first thing about keys, cryptography, Satoshi, the, the origin story, why it matters from a hard money perspective. So um, that was just a first brush up against it. Uh, then 2017 happened. Uh, everything was going up, right? Uh, could be, you know, Jose token and it was going up, right? So I was, I was yeah. buying buying this stuff with the little uh, money I had, the, the little disposable income that I had. And coming out of that crash, we'll say in 2018, um, I never sold any Bitcoin, just kind of had it there. I'm like, ah, well, you know, it is what it is. That was kind of a fun ride. Talk about it during the holidays with folks. Um, but then I noticed it didn't die. It just kind of, you know, Bitcoin stayed there. Uh, and there was every once in a while a story in the news about it. And I was like, okay, this is really interesting. Um, studied economics in college uh, and then went on to grad school at the University of Minnesota as well to, to study econ. And, you know, this Bitcoin was a monetary good, not controlled by anyone or not, not owned or created by a company. It was just this fascinating thing that didn't die. Um, so that was my first glimpse of the rabbit hole. And then jumping down the rabbit hole, I mean, I've, I've committed the sins. I worked for a enterprise blockchain company. Um, I worked for a, a stable coin issuer. I worked for Circle. I was a solutions engineer at Circle before joining Unchained. So I, I was in the belly of the beast, right? The, the market architecture for these NFT platforms. And uh, back when we thought enterprise blockchain, you could track lettuce on the blockchain and it was going to change people's lives. Um, and I've kind of seen all of that come and go. Um, and of course, NFTs are still here and, and that's kind of being worked out. But um, the staying power, the, the rock through it all has been Bitcoin. Um, and it's it's taken on a different life for, you know, it's viewed as different things for different people. I think uh, maybe it was uh, Gigi said this best that you know, Bitcoin's a prism. I don't know if this was exactly him, but uh, Bitcoin is different things. To different Definitely people. him. So, you know, it's not just about 20 percent uh, U.S. dollar denominated gains in a month anymore. Uh, that's not what it's about. That's not why we're all here. That's not why we've dedicated our careers to this and our, our time spent educating about this. So uh, yeah, I've kind of been through it in a, in a short amount of time. So that's that's a little bit of my, my origin history without going too far, or boring you too much. No, nah, that's that's breathtaking. And I always like, uh, funny you bring up their GG, same conversation I had with him was basically along that line where it's like, I came from like shit cornery. Like I've seen it firsthand. And like, I tell you from being on that side, you can go over there if you want, but it just doesn't work. It just mm -hmm. doesn't work the other way. So I, I'm fascinated that you were able to go through that, you know, shit cornery, if you want to call it that, you know, area and then overcome sure. it. Totally. And it's, you know, and folks at these companies, you know, at, at Circle or at this enterprise blockchain company, they're smart individuals from an engineering perspective. And like, you know, even from a finance perspective, I mean, branding and marketing, people have talents. Um, but when it comes to understanding Bitcoin for what it is, that is where there's an education gap. Um, you know, shout out to a fellow concierge teammate, David Layton, had a really awesome tweet yesterday um, just talking about, you know, if you ask, you know, somebody who can somebody who can explain Bitcoin very well usually holds primarily just Bitcoin. Somebody who can't explain Bitcoin very well usually holds Bitcoin and a bunch of other shit coins and, and JPEGs and stuff like that. So there's signal through the noise there. And it's always been the case. Um, and it's just, you know, coming out of that world and looking back at it, it's just a lot more stark of a contrast. I agree 1000. Shout out to David. Insightful. Yeah, yeah. That was a good post there. So if, if you know, and this is speaking as like somebody who's listening to the show right now. So if Bitcoin is such a, a big fiasco thing, then it, then like you guys say it is, then it's super important for us to be able to take care of this, right? And this is where I wanted to introduce you to this conversation because um, I was having a rant about like, enough is enough for people saying that, you know, having your own keys is complicated. Enough is mm -hmm. enough with like, I don't know which device to go to. I don't know what it's going to do. So we wanted you to come in here and talk specifically, you know, cold storage, but the next level of cold storage, which is multi-sig. Can you walk the listeners through First of all, why is it important to have cold storage and then why you should improve that with multi-sig? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think you hit on a really, really good, uh, you framed it really well by asking like, why is it important for cold storage? Why is it important for multi-sig? Because, you know, there's like the, the common saying, you know, to, to the man with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, right? Well, let's say your, your problem is securing your Bitcoin. Well, what's the hammer you use? Oh, self -cut, or a, a custodial, I'm going to use Coinbase. I'm going to leave it at Coinbase. That's my problem is where do I keep my Bitcoin? Well, might as well just keep it where, where I bought it. Um, 
but you want to expand your toolbox. You always want to be learning more, right? We all get our Bitcoin from exchanges uh, in some form or fashion, maybe non-KYC, uh, maybe maybe mining is a little bit of a differentiator there. But when it comes to kind of your average, uh, your average Bob or Alice, uh, they're going to be getting their Bitcoin from an exchange. From there, it's really talking about, okay, well, is that enough? Okay, what's you hear about self-custody, you hear about securing your Bitcoin in cold storage. Well, what does that mean and why is it important? Um, well, and we talk about this in, in multi-sig all the time, but you know, for from a self-custody standpoint in general, it's about eliminating that single point of failure that you can't control. In this instance, that's the exchange. Uh, that's Coinbase. Coinbase holds your Bitcoin. You don't hold your Bitcoin. You have a claim to that Bitcoin. Um, you, you know that you you talk about often. It's it's a it's a claim. It's but it's not yours. It's not you don't hold your own keys. So Coinbase is the single point of failure. And not to keep ripping on Coinbase, but they're the most popular exchange. You know. So <laughs> hey, we'll just say say that. Yeah, Tell we rip on BlockFi all the time. Tell them Tyler. Keep yeah, on. give them Tyler. Give it to them. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and those key managers. I mean, they hold the keys, right? So they're the honeypot. If there's a, an exploit or a hack, um, doesn't even have to be a hack of, you know, of of your Bitcoin, it could be personal identifying information. I mean, you're just uh, trusting these institutions with a lot. And when it comes to your Bitcoin, um, you know, the best money ever created, the the human rights tool that it is, and you're just going to let Coinbase uh, custody it for you, that just doesn't sit well. And so when you realize like, okay, there are better options out there, I can expand my toolbox and not just have my hammer that is Coinbase and let them do it for me. But now I can actually take control of that myself. You know, that that is is what matters. And I think that resonates with a lot of people over time because number go up, right? All this it's 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 a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin on Coinbase now. Uh it's ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin on Coinbase. Uh, you know, when they when they check it again or you know, in due time and it all of a sudden becomes that much more real that hey, somebody guesses my username and password right or spoofs my two-factor authentication or you know there's a data leak somewhere, all of a sudden you know, I don't hold my keys. I'm powerless against that. So single point of failure that you can't control. That's, that's to me, the driving force behind the desire to self-custody. Yeah. Just that term key master sounds nasty. Like, I, I don't want key anybody holder. to be, oh, key holder. Is key, that what you key, said? Key, no, key master, key holder. That's how I'm thinking about it. Like, key master. Yeah. 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 I don't want to do none yeah. of that stuff. Like, don't be the master of anything in my life, please. Good. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's very strange. Yeah. Soy but, boys like that. Huh? Soy boys like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, True. yeah, they do. But they, they, I was going to try to give like a nice politically correct <laughs> answer. No, they, they they like that. But it's because, you know, as Tyler hinted at, it's safer to kind of have somebody else, or in their mind at least, because you and all everybody in this room here would argue that baloney, it's not safer. But yeah, to, just to the soy boys, I guess it's mm -hmm. like, nah, but, you know, it's hard to think of like 24 words and, and how do I secure that and... That's my best soul boy voice. There that's, you go. That's the best one I got. <laughs> I mean, your normal voice is kind of good too. Ah, uh, okay. Jab. I'll take the jab. That's cool. Uh, so Tyler, all right. Now if somebody's gotten in that that rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they they figured out that this is you know hard money, the best that it can get. They want to hold it. They want to get the keys off of Coinbase. So introduce them to multisig. Like, like, explain multisig. I think it's fascinating how you explain multisig. Yeah, uh, multisig is. I think a lot of people get um, not scared. That's not the right word, but it's uh, it's intimidating to to hear the phrase multi signature. And so, like, what the hell is multi signature? It sounds so <laughs> ridiculous. Like, you know, I need to learn now what a signatures mean, and does this mean I need to take a class on cryptography? Because it's you know that's way too technical for me. Um, well, you know, really, multi signature is you, you. Let's say you take self custody. Let's say you take that leap. You know, companies like Ledger and Trezor have been around for a while, right? So, you know, maybe the concept of a hardware wallet. Uh, I prefer using the term device because wallet gives the idea out there that Bitcoin lives in the device, and, and that's just not true. Um, but these devices have been around for a while. So, let's say uh, that somebody does take that step and moves their Bitcoin off of Coinbase to an address that they control and secured by one of their uh, devices. So at that point, you know, what you've done is taken self-custody of your Bitcoin. Um, but what you've done is you've moved your Bitcoin to a single signature address, right? Single signature, meaning to move that Bitcoin, you just need one signature. And that's what these devices are really good at doing. These devices have basically like two primary functions, right? They, they keep your, your, they, they leverage your private key in order to sign transactions and they can help generate a, a seed phrase for you. 
Um, so when you are just using one treasure, let's say, and you move Bitcoin from me to Jose or from Jose to Ben, you sign and provide one signature. So single signature, it's not that different from multi-signature. Multi-signature just means now instead of just using one signature from one device to move your Bitcoin, you need multiple signatures from a certain set of devices to move your Bitcoin. So, okay, that might make sense functionally, but why is it better? Why is it a 10x improvement over uh, just using one of these devices? So that's where we get into the world of multi-signature. Um, and really, you know, I tell clients this, again, it's going back to the single point of failure uh, risk that we were talking about earlier. Imagine you being your own Coinbase now. You are your own key master for yourself. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Shout out to Spider-Man. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you have one seed phrase and you have one device, well, that's better than, than having your Bitcoin on Coinbase because now you are the controller of that Bitcoin. But the single point of failure kind of arises and now, okay, what happens if that seed phrase burns in a fire uh, or gets some wine spilt on it or it gets you know, ripped up accidentally or stolen uh, or thrown out in the trash? So many different stories uh, are out there. And if that single seed phrase, those list of words that are the backup for your device get compromised or your device breaks, these devices aren't perfect. Uh, Phil Geiger uh, on, the, on the team had a great essay come out on our Unchained blog recently, um, just about common pitfalls of these hardware devices, uh, why you should always keep your, your seed phrase physically secure. So when you're just dealing with one of these, one device or one seed phrase, that's a single point of failure. And if something happens to that, you're screwed. And that's really scary for a lot of people. My, my father would hear that and be like, hell no, I'm not you know, touching yeah. one of these hardware devices. Well, it doesn't have to it's be- almost like Russian yeah. roulette. Totally. It is. It, In a sense. Yeah, it is. Because, you know, what is it? Uh, Murphy's Law, whatever can happen will happen, right? You don't think sure. that your seed phrase is going to get thrown out in the trash. Uh, but then, you know, you're, you're dating somebody. They want to clean your apartment for you as like a gesture and they just throw away your seed phrases. <laughs> <laughs> Something could happen. Gone. Hey, Gone. your OPSEC is trash if a girlfriend finds you. <laughs> your 24 Gone. words. I was, and yeah, them. exactly. Your OPSEC hey. is bad and you might not want to hodl onto that person. Uh, but... Yeah. <laughs> you know, Tyler's if you're a pure Bitcoin away talking about hollow like a person. <laughs> exactly. That that yeah, that that's super fascinating. So yeah, basically you spread out your chance of Murphy's law taking over and destroying your whole wealth. Yes. Uh yeah, it's you kind of alter Murphy's law. It'd be like, okay, well, what can happen would happen uh, in a world of just having one single point of failure, but now with multi-sig. You create this environment for yourself. You now create this situation for yourself where there's redundancy in your security. So now if one of your devices, let's say you're doing a two of three multi-sig, that's what we do here at Unchained. So you need two keys out of a set of three to provide signatures to move your Bitcoin. Two out of three keys. Let's say when you're working with that, you have your two devices and let's say Unchained holds the third key because that's what we do with our collaborative custody model. Let's say one of your devices craps out and you plug it in, screen doesn't work and it's broken. Let's say both of your devices break. Maybe you can't find your, your, your ledger and your treasure is broken. And let's say that one of your seed phrases got thrown out. Like worst case scenario, you're having a horrible day if that's the case. You know, both of your devices are either non-existent or busted. One of your seed phrases is thrown out. But let's say you have your one remaining other seed phrase and that's still there you'd be able to still You're access good. your Bitcoin. You're good. That's crazy. And that single point of failure is now eliminated. Uh, that peace of mind, you can sleep easy at night knowing, hey, if, if I'm ever in that situation, a lot has gone wrong and I need to maybe reassess some other things in my life. But you know, just knowing that what, what you're afforded with multi-sig changes the game completely. I agree with that 10,000%. I was telling Jose that someone called me on Sunday and was like, hey, uh, Something's going on with my seat. I can't get to my coin. And <laughs> I'm texting Jose. And, and what had happened was the person had single point of failure, cold storage. Um, they miscopied their seed phrase. So they had two no. copies of it, right? So Boy. the copy that they held personally was off. And the copy that someone else was holding for them was on. Um, but even before that, they, um, they tried to get in. Their seed was wrong, right? So they created a new wallet with a new set of keys and they were thinking that they were locked out from the original, which they were, right? Two different wallets. But um, so we finally figured out that whole thing. And I'm like, you should probably multi-sync. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, A, you're not a technical person. 
B, you already slipping like this with your single key yeah. with a few coins. Like, bro, yeah. multi-sig. You know what's important, sure. though, with that statement? Yeah. You should get into multi-sig. And this is shameless plug, call it whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You should get help with that multi-sig. I, I, yeah, I said like, unchainedcapital.com. Yeah. And this is not a show. This isn't a plug. Yeah, but I'm no, like, no, no. It's just, go to them. This is what they do. Value is value. That's the yeah. thing that I keep saying in the show. Some people may try to reach out. Like, oh, well, obviously you work for Andre Capital, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. Value is easy to spot when it's valuable, right? Oh, because yeah. a lot of these things are extremely multi-sig. I mean, it's extremely complicated for the majority of the people. We're so damn early. Mm-hmm. So it's like, not just get on multi-sig. Get some help with it. Don't feel ashamed about that. Yeah. You know, pure Bitcoin only companies, Unchained, com- Unchained Capital is probably the only one. <laughs> uh, but like, go to a Bitcoin friendly company and let them assist you. You'll be talking to individuals like Tyler and and, and great people that know their stuff. So, yeah. and Tyler, I get this question. Oh, go ahead, Tyler. I was just going to say there's network effects there too, working with somebody like Unchained, right? Let's say you go sure. through the ringer. You have something crazy happen where you need to restore your, your seed words onto your device. You know, now you know how to do that, right? So you can be that resource for your friend group or your circle or your tribe, you know, so that there's network effects there as well. I think, you know, empowering individuals, being able to navigate uh, with individuals and teach them these concepts of multi-sig just returns greater dividends in the future. So that's, that's also what you get from working with a company like Unchained. I'd say this, Unchained Capital sales hat off, having somebody there to help guide you um, while you, you know, Bitcoiners are open-minded and, and have this education bent to them a lot. It's like, okay, now I did this, but now I know if my best friend ever did this, I'd be able to, I'd be able to help them. Yeah, that's a great point. Spreading the word of Satoshi, as they like to say, right? And, and being able to do it and on a high level, right? Because you can go from, you know, I've had the pleasure of sitting through uh, a, a lot of, the, you know, watching you work and going through these, you know, concierge uh, uh, onboardings. And it, it's definitely one of those things where you could come in being a complete noob and walk out being a, a pretty expert level, you know, coach, Cold storage, multi sigger. Is there is there yeah. an adjective for that? <laughs> so yeah, I, I think it's extremely interesting. Well, the question I do get though about multi sig a lot, and I never really had a good answer for this. Maybe you got one. Why two of three? Because I know you can do higher. I know you could do five, seven. Uh, I've heard some crazy combinations. Why is two of three the sweet spot? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question. Because um, it you know humans are are more is better all the time, right? Uh, and you know, very rarely do we think about trade-offs in general, but let alone trade-offs associated with uh, how we think about security. And we immediately go, okay, everything from setting a pin on your phone. Why would I do four, a four-digit pin on my iPhone when I could do a 16-digit uh, something else, you know, and be, be you know, a lot more complex with it? Um, this is a pretty popular adage in, in the community is, you know, complexity can be the enemy of security. Um, and when you're dealing with individuals who are making that leap, they've, they've expanded their toolbox now to not just be using an exchange and they want to self-custody um, and they want to now jump into multi-sig. Well, there's a lot of learning that's gone on. There's a lot of personal changes, a lot of different ways people are thinking about securing their funds. And when you look at a, a setup like a three of five, for example, that's a really popular setup outside of two of three. So you instead of in a three of five setup, you now have five total keys in order to move the Bitcoin from your addresses, you're gonna need three signatures, three out of the five. Well, if you think about what you need to protect and what you need to keep secure and manage uh, in a two of three setup, you know, with Unchained, we're holding that third key, you got two devices, two sets of seed phrases. That's four total items. Four is kind of a lot, right? Four things that you gotta keep protected uh, when you're talking about securing your life savings potentially, four things is where I wanna place my focus. and, and separate those things geographically and do all the best OPSEC you know, that I can do with those four materials. Now apply that same line of thinking to a three of five. Well, okay, let's say your collaborative custody member holds uh, one key. So now you have four devices with four sets of seed words, that's eight total items. You've now doubled the amount of things that you need to protect and need to keep secure. So it's, you know, and maybe your collaborative custody partner uh, holds more than one key, or maybe you don't use a collaborative custody partner, and now you need you have 10 things you need to keep secure, all your devices, all your seed phrases. It just becomes this, this game of, you know, not not a uh, how am I gonna fuck it up, but when am I gonna fuck it up? Because keeping yeah. that many things secure, keeping your head, you know, getting your head around well, where did I store that associated seed phrase or that device? 
Um, and we're just humans. I mean, unless you guys both have like three different vacation homes and stuff that I'm you know, not aware of, I can't think of 10 secure locations where I can store all my stuff. Yeah. So, you know, get down to brass tacks, make it simple, but still, you know, insanely, insanely secure with the two of three. To me, it's a no brainer. If I could interject, we've talked about it before. A big corporation purchases a billion dollars of uh, Bitcoin. Do you think they two out of three? That's that's a really good question. Um, from a business yeah. perspective, you know, they might have organizational structure, and there might even be a legal component in play. Where, let's say, you have a certain number of C-suite individuals or a founding team or the board, uh, you might want to increase your quorum size. And in that sort of situation, um, you know, I, I think maybe expanding out of two or three might be helpful. Um, but even within yeah. a two of three, maybe you could create clones of keys. You know, you, you could have the same, fundamentally the same key as another individual on the board because you're still operating off the same seed phrase. Um, so I think it's probably situation dependent, but that's a really good point. And I think, uh, you know, as you're thinking about treasury management, that's when it can get kind of interesting and you can actually uh, have a lot more resources at your disposal too for the safety of those elements. You do a five of seven, uh, if you are a company and you can afford safety deposit boxes and different continents, you know, it just becomes that much easier to manage. You could have a whole team. A come think about this. This would be really cool. This is kind of like a little cosmic. But if, if, if these multinational conglomerates are moving their treasuries into Bitcoin, you could literally have entire dedicated to key security. I mean, you could have a team of 20 individuals whose sole purpose it is to know the whereabouts, the mechanisms, the, the signing devices, the wallet coordinator softwares. I mean, that that is going to happen and it's going to be super cool. So I'm sorry, I just kind of had to, to talk my way through. No, that that's, that's uh, super yeah. cool, man. I mean, we, we, we talked about it before. Like if you're a big corporation, how do you secure this? You know, we, we, we immediately went to, oh, board members. And now I'm thinking probably your legal team as well, right? So your mm -hmm. attorneys have a key, board members have a key, and then C-level execs. Um, but if you're El Salvador, you know what I mean? Like you got Bukele tweeting every dip, like, Hey, I bought more. Hey, I bought more. It's like, how are you securing, how this? are you securing that right. in, in a, in a world that doesn't understand Bitcoin is what it is. But like the U S roams around, you know, every ocean water with a big flex of their Navy. Like what is it going to look like when countries kind of go to war over this stuff? And uh, it's cool to think about how multi-sig kind of plays that defense. Yeah. You know? What do you trust? Especially if you know what it's <laughs> worth and you know what it does. Who on yeah. like in, in Tyler's example, having a team, like, do yeah. you trust that team? That team is like the point of failure there. Literally. If that team fucks it up, it's over for everybody. <laughs> That's true. That is true. So you have, you know, like backup teams, or it's maybe you have like a a vigilante within your organization that's also a key holder, but they're just a floater. Nobody knows who they are. Uh there's so yeah. many interesting things you can do. Straight. Yeah, it's, it's going to be cool to watch this unfold. Another thing that I wanted to bring up with, you know, having more keys than two of three, that is like when you go to move the Bitcoin, mm -hmm. it's not, it's, it's about securing half of it, but you know, that's half the battle. But the other half is like all these signatures now have to show up at the same time to kind of like Confirm. sign off here. Mm -hmm. So the more people have to come to the table to sign or devices have to come that's to the cool. table to sign. That's hard to generate over and yeah. over again, man. It's not yeah. flexible. Yeah. So then that that's a that's a an interesting point. Um, and I think, you know, the way the on-chain platform is is constructed, you know, it's you, you don't have to have your devices co-located to sign a transaction. Of course, you could just uh, construct, you know, the the transaction in the platform and then gather signatures as needed from from different areas. Um, but you're thinking about to your point, Jose, like added complexity and doing that with a larger quorum size, possibly in a, in a platform outside of Unchained, or you need to, I mean, let's say Caravan uh, is Unchained's open source uh, recovery tool. You know, that if you're going to be gathering signatures from different geographic locations, you need to construct the exact same transaction down to the fee amount, construct everything the exact same in two separate geographic locations. That's hard enough with two key holders. Imagine doing that four times over, different time zones in play. I mean, it just becomes kind of unwieldy. Um, and then to your, yeah. but you also said another thing, bringing these signatures together, you're, I mean, given certain address types, you're creating a larger transaction in total size. So you're gonna be paying higher fees as well. Uh, might be a little bit less of a concern than the security um, and, and ease of use, but you know, paying more fees just to gather more signatures over time is it is it really worth it when you can just two of three? Yeah, and trying to keep the consensus across the board. Imagine if you split yeah. it up between like chair board members, and it's like legal team, bang bang bang, and then you need four signatures to sign. 
but one of them is holding out. Like, he, I ain't showing so, up. I don't care. So, <laughs> so who was it? Um, who was the pizza guy? Um, Laszlo. Kind of. Was it Laszlo? I forget the name. What was the name of the business? What? Um, what do you mean the pizza guy? It was there. There was a pizza owner. There's one in Worcester near my house. Um, Papa John's, right? Papa okay. John's. I don't know what the story. Go ahead. Okay, so Papa John said something. You know that was deemed inappropriate. Uh, I think it was. I think it used the N word or something. Sure. But he's the head of Papa John's, right? So if he holds a key in conjunction with everyone mm-hmm. else, and they're kicking him out, like, hey, you have to step down and now just be a board member and not CEO. Like he could have one of the conflict. Keys. <laughs> like, no, I'm not giving you the key because you know what I mean. Like, that's right. a problem. So yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. About I, I guess it's naturally best to traverse into like best practices, Tyler. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a very general term. It could be best practices, security, best practices on getting started with multi sig. I'll let you take it whichever direction you want. But what are some best practices for somebody? Uh, so best practices for for individuals who are thinking about getting into multi sig. I think um, you know. It's a best. This is going to sound maybe a little cheesy. It's 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 a best practice to continue your education. Always be learning, right? I mean, even if it's something not purely multi sig, but you know, I've done threads on stuff about how to read a block explorer, how to you know, uh, how to think about the twenty one million hard cap. There's these things in Bitcoin where if you continue your education, all of a sudden it makes your current set up and your your current Bitcoin holdings just feel that much more coveted, that much more secure, like that much that you want to go the extra mile, uh, just a little bit more to make sure you're doing everything right. So setting the foundation of always be learning. Uh, and then when it comes to multi-sig tactically, uh, I think it is, you know, a best best practice to make sure that your keys, you know, aren't just sitting uh, in a desk drawer all co-located together, right? You have, you know, in a two of three with Unchained, we'll use that as the example. You got two devices, two sets of seed words. If those are ever uh, within you know one foot of each other uh, for more than 10 minutes, and those 10 minutes should be when you're on an onboarding call with me, and then after that, it's up to you to, to take extreme ownership over your situation and you know disperse those things, uh, you're in a bad situation if they're all together. Um, you can put both of your devices in a safe but then if the safe gets stolen, well, now you're out two devices and you don't know, you know what somebody could be doing with those devices. So best practice, geographically separate the elements of your setup. Um, there's a bunch of options available to you. You have uh, you know, a safe in, in your home or in an office, uh, different locations within your home, um, a trusted friend or family member with a little bit of an asterisk there, right? They really need to know the importance of what they're securing. Um, so I'd think hard about that one, but safety deposit box at a bank, there are different elements if you sit down and think about it that are way, way better than just keeping, you know, all of your stuff in a desk drawer. Um, so that's that's a personal responsibility thing that, that key holders now need to think about. Um, you know, it's really easy to log off of Coinbase, um, but as a key manager yourself, you know, what are you going to be doing to, to help secure your own Bitcoin? Um, you can have fun with it too, right? That's kind of the cool thing about owning your own keys. Have fun with it. Think, you know, think yeah. about what is going to be easy for me, but hard for somebody else. And how do I, how do I separate these items? That's a best practice, um, without rambling too much. Next best practice, um, kind of an underrated point in multi-sig. Um, it's not just enough to have your keys, uh, your wallet coordinator software, like Unchained Capital, the Unchained interface is there. You see your balance. You can even spend from it using your, your two devices. Um, but let's say doomsday scenario happens. Let's say, God forbid, un- Unchained uh, goes down or our servers are down. You can't log in. Well, we don't want to be the single point of failure for your Bitcoin. I spend half the, the calls with clients talking about how the dangers of a single point of failure. So, right. you know, Bitcoin multi-signature is embedded at the protocol level. So, you know, Unchained and, and other collaborative custody service providers, we just put a nice UI on top of it. We have awesome, you know, services, financial services built on top of the foundation of multi-sig. But at the end of the day, uh, it's just public private key cryptography and using Bitcoin. Um, so what you'd be able to do is build your, your Unchained vault or your, you know, let's say you build a multi-sig inspector. Uh, you'd be able to build a multi-sig wallet in another Bitcoin wallet software. Uh, for Unchained vaults, you know, we have clients could use Caravan or Sparrow or Electrum. If they're using cold cards. I think Blue Wallet's also on the table uh, from a PSBT standpoint. But the ability to move your, your wallet outside of the confines of the Unchained interface to somewhere else, 
That's really important. And the way you do that is you, you back up your wallet configuration file. Um, we have an awesome article about this in the Unchained blogs. Uh, I did a Twitter thread on it not too long ago. It is the treasure map to your Bitcoin addresses. So you know that you don't have to trust Unchained to be around um, or, or X service provider to be around. You could always recover your Bitcoin in another software. Um, that wallet configuration file, it's pretty techy, right? You look at it, you're like, what are these public keys? What are these derivation paths? What do I need to know? Hey, just download the file. Keep it safe. Know that that's a really good best practice because it's not just enough to have your keys. Yeah, I, I like to add that on the top of like, you know, say, okay, I do agree with you. Your keys should be separated for sure. But say you have those two keys together. That's not enough, right? You need this treasure map. Right. You need to be able to construct this wallet. You need to know the pins to the devices. You need, if you go through the Unchained UI, you will need the 2FA. Like there's so many layers between... So, like, if you really get breached, your OPSEC was just the worst that it can ever be. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I agree with you there. There is certain things that the bad actor would need in oh, place totally. to go perfectly in order to spend your Bitcoin. Well, and the thing there is, you know, sometimes that bad actor, you got you to gotta protect yourself from yourself, too, right? <laughs> if <laughs> if you forget to download the wallet configuration file and something happens to Unchained, there's no, no one to blame but you, right? It's again that that personal extreme ownership over over these these new this new security model. And again, I think that goes back to the first point of just always be learning. You know, sure, download a wallet configuration file. You might not know what the hell it does, but now that you have it downloaded, maybe the incentive is now there to go out and learn about it, read Twitter threads, read articles, things like that. Yeah, I think the analogy you use um, with the treasure map, it's, I think, is spot on. I think when yeah. you, you see it, you're right. It's like a lot of X-pubs. It's like whatever. But when you can simplify and say, well, you have to find the location of where it's located. And this shows us that or shows the Bitcoin network protocol that that's important. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, great advice. Kudos there. Um, I want to talk about your weekly threads. Mm -hmm. So, like, what was the original spawn idea for this? Because I love them. Not only are they insightful. Um, they're not obviously biasy and they're not leaning on one specific thing. They're all over the place. So if you could, you know, give us a little bit on what inspired this, um, for you to be doing this, but also if you want to have people follow you so they can follow this thread, I think it's a good time to plug it. Yeah. Thank you for, for bringing that up. It's really just started as fun. I mean, I'm the, you know, I thought, uh, technical director at Unchained. Well, I, I should, you know, be out there in the community as best I can putting out different information. And there are, you know, shout out to like the Matt Odells of the world that know the technicals front and back. Um, but for a large swath of people getting into Bitcoin, you know, how are we going to get private keys into a billion hands if education is not there? So that's that was was my goal and inspiration, just, just educating people. Uh, my Twitter handle is at uh, clockwork underscore prior. It's a weird Twitter handle. Um, but uh, it started kind of before my Bitcoin days, I think. Um, the, the underlying reason why that is my Twitter handle is because um, I think you should always be updating your priors on things, right? Always be updating how you view things. You should do it like clockwork. So it should be something where, hey, you know, I heard about this, you know, this issue or this, uh, this person. Well, you know what? I'm going to adjust my priors on that issue and maybe take in some more information. I think that's a really powerful kind of life philosophy to live by. Um, I did yeah. that with Bitcoin, saw it as one thing, but, but then I adjusted my priors on it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is kind of crazy. And I didn't know about hard money and that sort of stuff. Um, so this was like a super dope. Yeah, a little, little Poetic, bro. tangent there to, to the, the underlying I reason. Like it. Uh, for the I like it. Listen, and, and, I like it. In the universe uh, with Bitcoin Twitter, where you have people naming themselves the most random of things. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's cool. I love the philosophy side yeah. of it. It's really dope. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. I, I recommend anybody who's listening to the show to definitely go follow Tyler. These things are super impactful. I think what blows me around, uh, uh, blows my mind with Tyler is, is that I know this stuff, yeah. but like every time I talk to Tyler, it's like a new thing that's like, mm -hmm. ah, like that makes a ton of sense. And, yeah. and that's a superpower. I've told you that before. I feel that way with Jose. Oh, yeah, same. Well, this whole year, doing talking in bits, that's what it's been. It's like, oh, I learned something new, but I'm still lost. Yeah, I but, think if you nailed the title, I think it's just going back and admitting when you're wrong, learning new things, uh, and being able mm -hmm. to like be humble in that sense. Um, Tyler, the holidays just passed, man. First and foremost, I, I, I hope you hoddled days. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you had a Merry Christmas with the fam and stuff. But <laughs> I was going to say, man, that. what's up? The hoddle days. I, I was going to say hoddle yeah, days. Yeah. I was going to say hoddle yeah. days if Ben didn't say it. So perfect. Yeah. Uh, you guys are ahead of me then. I, I got to use my hoddles better, but. How'd it go, man? How did the Bitcoin conversations go? I'm sure they came up. I'm sure Uncle, uh, I, I used the term Jerry. I don't know if you actually have an Uncle Jerry, but I'm sure Uncle Jerry came around and tried to uh, 
talk some Bitcoin with you. Any stories to share with us? You know, I loaded up a bunch of open dimes this holiday season and Smart. gave them out to, to people. Um, and you know what? Doing that, because uh, a lot of people say, you know, gift with Swan or, you know, there's other ways you can gift Bitcoin, right? Um, but hey, if I give you an open dime, first and foremost, shout out to, to Rodolfo and the CoinKai team. They're cool looking pieces of hardware. They're just pretty sweet. Um, I mean, I like wear one. Right, I got you got oh, one on me. Um, that's the realness. Get that with diamonds, bro. <laughs> right? It's like, hey, this could be the most expensive piece of jewelry in the room. Nobody knows. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, hundred grand on my neck, and you don't know, bro. Super good point there. I like that. I like right? that. Right? <laughs> yeah, we need the days of like you know, we 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 need athletes and and uh, and yeah. and movie stars wearing open dimes. I think that'd be sweet. Um, but like you you give somebody a really cool piece of hardware, you know, they might. You leave somebody to their own devices, they might Google it, try to learn on themselves. If they don't, just means they get to get on a, a Zoom or a FaceTime with me and learn more um, if they ever want to redeem it. Um, so it just, it's its all about education constantly. And this holiday season, man, oh, dude, <laughs> with family, you know, now it's its become a, a big question I got from my family or big like phrases uh, are, so, so how do you like working in crypto? Or uh, so you're working in crypto now Strange. or yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, yeah. you know what, after a while when I was done just flipping tables and, you know, raging around, <laughs> like, you know what, I work in Bitcoin, um, not crypto. I work in Bitcoin. There's a delineation of the two. Um, and what I'm doing every single day is helping people secure their life savings in some cases uh, in, in the hardest money ever created. And we are, uh, we are setting up Bitcoin retirement accounts. We are securing generational wealth. We are laying a foundation for a Bitcoin future where your money can't be debased right in front of your eyes. That's what I'm doing. And I love doing it. I don't know if you want to talk about crypto. Man, I have no, I mean, to me, crypto means cryptography. Uh, you should go check out the Reddit channel or the subreddit called crypto. It's all about cryptography. I love that. Uh, so to me, that's what crypto is. I don't, the, the casino stuff with the dog tokens and, you know, that Ethereum, whatever that is that probably won't ever, you know, come to, it's just like, that's not, that's not what it's about. So try to gently reframe the discussion. That's what I did this past holiday season. Um, you just say it enough. Then it's kind of like, you know, humans are social animals. We all get a little wine drunk and we're talking in conversation. I use Bitcoin in my responses. All of a sudden, crypto leaves the, the lexicon. And now it's we're talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about Bitcoin hardware devices, Bitcoin keys, Bitcoin addresses, uh, no longer crypto. Uh, you, you should end the conversation. That person is going to be thinking about Bitcoin um, and not, not whatever, you know, dog token ad that they're seeing on Twitter or something. Now, during the holidays, when you see someone and they say, you know, how is Bitcoin going or, you know, what is Bitcoin? How do you answer those on the regular? Yeah, that's like, and like, what is Bitcoin is like such a loaded question all the time, but it happens, yeah. right? And holidays, you got Uncle Jerry or your cousin is just like, not really into this, but I see you got the laser eyes on Twitter. So like, what's up? Like, how's Bitcoin doing? <laughs> um, Are you okay? Right. And it's just like, you know what, what, it, like, what is Bitcoin? Um the way that I've like kind of taken a step back, my first instinct is, hey, come here in the, in the corner with me at this party. We're going to talk for 20 minutes and I'm going to say a bunch of stuff you don't understand just to make myself feel better. That's not the way to do it. Um, nah. So when I hear, you know, what is Bitcoin? Uh, if it's somebody I care about, if it's a family member, I say, well, uh, here, let's let's download this app called Blue Wallet. I'll give you some and, and we can see. And, you know, if you have questions about it, just text me. Uh, but I definitely recommend just learning on I your like own. That a lot. You know, nobody likes being told what things are. Uh, I'm not out here to like, I mean, education is different from lecturing uh, and, and just telling somebody, oh, it's a, it's a hard capped money that nobody can mess with. You know, after a while, it's, uh, I know what Tyler's going to say. I'm not going to ask him about Bitcoin. But if you give somebody the incentive to learn, uh, the, most, the po most powerful learning, I swear to God, comes at 10 at night when you're alone with your laptop. That's when you're going to look yeah. stuff up that you're truly curious in. Um, so at a minimum, like what I tell people is just, here's some, learn about it on your own. But if you want some resources, come to me, I'll send you some links and, and you should be good to go. I yeah, like yeah, that's a dope strategy. Like um, yeah, you, you one up me on the open dimes. I just, Cash App was just too easy now this year. Yeah. True. I mean, they added True. that feature to be able to yeah. shoot it out. So I just like, but I did make sure that I shot everybody uh, a message 
Uh, I posted it on Twitter. I don't remember what it is off the head, but it was basically along the lines of like, "It's the hardest money you'll ever have." Yeah, this is hard Christmas. money. I'm not buying you anything that you're just gonna waste, right? right? And then what I got back from a few close family members um, was like, you know, because it's the price has been kind of I call stable, but like, man, this thing hasn't done anything, man. Like, what I got this here, whatever. Yeah, take a take a look at the global economy. It's got to know that time preference. You know man. what I mean? That's like, all it is. You just, you just that time preference just needs to be higher, man. Like if you're gonna tell me that last year on Christmas Bitcoin was at twenty three and this 100%. year it's at fifty, it's yeah, like you can't tell me that it's doing nothing when yeah. everybody's up a hundred percent. Yeah, that'll take you seven years in the stock market, sir. Right. Yeah, I but, don't even get into that. Yeah. I, I should listen to Tyler Moore though on the like, yeah. hey, give him the incentive and just kind of walk away. Tim. I like it because I think I've just been listening and watching Parker Lewis way too much, and <laughs> I, I go ham on the, you know, the the death of the dollar and <laughs> and this thing is this and the twenty one million supply cap, which yeah. is everything, which is the reason why this thing is even valuable and I, stuff. But that's too much. That's I, a fire hose. I still like twenty one million. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I do use it's, the twenty one million. It's hard but, money cap twenty one million. But that's yeah. a fire hose because people don't understand why that's important. Yeah, yeah. I think right? like people don't under- like the true grokking of Bitcoin. Like you know, that is what's going to cause uh, a significant portion of your life savings to be moving over into Bitcoin. But for you to mess around with it, and, and you know, that's, I, I just think it's a constant evolution. At least in my in my opinion, uh, it's just all about you know getting giving somebody the reason to go look it up I'm like i don't know don't i'm i'm not going to i'm not the the judge jury and executioner on what bitcoin is i think you should should look it up for yourself um and i've told people that and it's kind of like off putting it's like oh i thought you were you know like on twitter you're always yeah, tweeting about hose. it i'm like hey yeah. <laughs> i'll an, i'll answer questions that you have but i'm not going to tell you which questions to ask Interesting. That, that, that's uh, a, I'm going to roll with that from now on. Yeah, there's, a, there's so many different ways to go with it. I was at uh, Theo's and I was mm-hmm. talking to Brendy and, and how's Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? And there's so many different things you could say. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Hard, hard money. Uh, hard money supply cap. I think it was a Phil that tweeted probably the other day where he said something along the lines of like, none of, none of what the other coins are doing is remotely even more important than just having mm-hmm. a fixed monetary supply. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just one of these things like you can mm-hmm. have flying refrigerators with ethereum that's super fantastic i'm sure people would love to eat while they're flying whatever but like there's just nothing cooler than that like a set monetary where i could just establish my wealth my family's generational wealth and and, and move on from there yeah you can't <laughs> arbitrarily create it uh you can send it halfway across the world and in, in one block confirmation in 10 minutes uh you i mean it's just that what it is, like we said at the beginning, it's a prism. It's different things to different people. You want to send remittance payments because your family's in Nigeria, send a Bitcoin. Uh, you know, you you want your savings to to not be subject to uh, just the, the Cantillon effect and, you know, the madness happening in the stock market and the arbitrary monetary debasement, save in Bitcoin. Uh, it's just, it's it's fantastic. It's, you, you, you want to operate on a different clock, watch, uh, watch the block height. There's so many different yeah. things you can do. For sure. And then now this new thing that I've been seeing lately is people calling uh, Bitcoin miner fees like taxes. Jason Lowry. Oh. Is that he's, a, he's, he's a military guy. I've been following him for a few weeks. I shared one of his sketches where he was like, Bitcoin replaces uh, like military proof of work um, and, and physical bloodshed. With, That's the same guy. Know, okay. Mining. Okay. So he's, he's a smart guy. I like his stuff. And I've been seeing him basically say uh, minor transaction fees are basically a tax, I believe. Um, but there's been lots of threads on this on Twitter in the last like two days. Yeah, what's your thoughts on that, Tyler? Benny? I mean, and then I'll let Ben go on that. Well, uh, if you, yeah, go ahead. if you, I mean, if you have enough hash rate, you could mine your own block and not pay any fee, right? So it's like you know, like there's nobody enforcing, no single entity enforcing uh, the fees. It's kind of an amalgamation of a shared network agreement. It's based off of incentive structure. It's just fundamentally bottom up different than how taxation works. I and mean, also the fees that you're going pays for ultimately the security of the network. Whereas right. uh, I pay taxes out of my paycheck because I'm an American citizen. I don't know the, I mean, especially when you can pr- also miners can't print their own fees. So like, you know, yeah. with, with, they're set. with, with taxes paid in U.S. dollars, well, we've seen you can just print more dollars. And I also don't know what my tax money goes to. You can tell me in hand wave, but like that's not proof. Uh, the decentralization and the increase, increasing hash rate is proof that you know my 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 fees are going to the security of the network. So I just think it's I think it's just such a, a 
stupid argument or such a stupid point to bring up that I, I really didn't entertain it all that much. Yeah, one of, one of his major points was that, like, all right, with the army, it's a tax. You pay for it, and they secure the country. Um, I, I got a lot to say about that, obviously, right? Um, but outside of that, the, the next part is, you know, miners, you paying that transaction fee, and, and basically they can almost, like, withhold services if you don't pay that fa- that tax. Yeah. Um, but it's like everyone's response to him was basically I pay this tax, and if I don't, I'm putting handcuffs and taking away. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's not happening with minors. So it's just it's a it's apples to oranges. It's not a, mm-hmm. a straight on comparison. Um, brilliant stuff on your end, man. But yeah, I, it, it's been a Twitter storm that with that conversation for the last three days. It just sounds so, like he found his niche. It found yeah. like he he's a military guy. So yeah, it's so up he, his lane. he came into Bitcoin and now he's re- cross referencing all his information to yeah. military analogies and things like that. Yeah, I get it, man. At, at the uh, you know I could I agree with both of you. I could go on a lot about this too. At a simplest simplest form. I need a favor to happen. Yeah. The favor is, is that I need this transaction to go in the history of time forever. And I need somebody to do that for me. I'm going to pay you a fee to do that for me. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Now, if we think about the VIP club at the line, and I want to get to the front of the VIP, maybe I toss a little bit more dollars your way. Right. But if I don't feel like it and I'm cool with standing in this line, I'm going to stand in this line. But it doesn't change the fact that, like Tyler said, the miners are not setting these fees. This is at a protocol level. So mm-hmm. they're not asking me for anything. And I'm cool with paying for a service needed. And that's what the miners are doing. Not to mention securing the network and all this other stuff. But I think yeah. people just overcomplicate things. Yeah. It's, it's maybe like yeah. a, it's a mandatory tip. And you can pay a, a two cent tip to, to, to the miner to push your transaction through. But it's just going to be a lot slower than if you were to pay them a $5 tip. Um, and obviously, you should be de- denominating that in Satoshis. And you know maybe think through that analogy more. But a tax just doesn't sit, sit right. Yeah. Well, I'll think about what you're saying with like mining your own block. Like, do you want to pay this eight cent sat fee here? Or do you want to get all the hash rate of the network and pay the thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars it's going to cost you to mine your own block? Yeah. Like, let's be real here, people. Let's I'm, rationalize what I'm, we're talking about I'm, here. I'm thinking about it in terms of like mail, right? So you go to the post office. Mm-hmm. Average to get from here to California is five days, right? Yeah. If you want it overnight, it's going to be 30 bucks. Uh, if you want to move your own transactions overnight, it's going to be about how many S19s? Oh, I, I don't know. You're going to need a lot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. They're at 10 to 14 grand a pop right now. So, like, would you rather pay a few bucks a transaction or yeah. would you rather pay like 500,000 in a mining setup? Like, it's, it's it, at a simplest form, yeah. you need a service to be provided for you. And just like in the real world, that service is not free. Thankfully, the miners don't set the prices yep. because then. Price gouging. You can think about, right, arbitrary things and, and things that are out of your control. You know, if it says eight sets, if it says three sets, you decide where you want to be on the VIP line. There's nobody enforcing you to do anything here. Right. Just make a smart choice and stop comparing apples to oranges. It just nice. makes no damn sense here. Right. I agree? Fully, <laughs> agree? fully agree. Yeah, just wanted to bring that up. Um, the last thing I got here, Tyler, before we uh, leave here, and I mean, we're from New England up here, so, so Mac Jones, Mac Jones... <laughs> I guess, decided to use Swan Bitcoin to reward his old, whole offensive line uh, with Bitcoin. I don't know and then, why. And then they Didn't lost. they lose? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, obviously, you, you know, Unchained Capital, all that stuff. But like, I like Swan. Was Swan mm-hmm. the right choice in your opinion? Why is this important? Is it important? I don't know. Hey, you know, getting Bitcoin uh, into the hands of as many people as possible, uh, is that's the goal. You know, uh, I think ultimately, I hope they secure it with Unchained um, or just self custody sure. multi sig in general. But the idea of like, you know, these these athletes. I mean, my my brother is a college athlete. He plays baseball for the University of Illinois. Uh, it's not football, less taxing on the body, but these athletes are the human embodiment of proof of work, right? They for they're sure. gonna have Bitcoin resonate with them more than a lot of other people. Um, so the more that we can get these hardworking athletes uh, to hold Bitcoin, um, I think they are also, I mean, they're hard workers by nature. Uh, so I think you know, they would be primed to go that extra mile, expand their toolkit, learn more about what they can do now with the Bitcoin that they might be holding on Swan in the intermediary period. But setting up private keys, um, I think it's, it's, you know, key management, holding your own keys, that's badass. And a lot of athletes are competitive in nature and they want to outcompete their components. Well, if your component's holding his, his Bitcoin, 
uh, and other stuff on Coinbase, you can outcompete the hell out of him by you know writing down 24 words. So it's just going to be a natural evolution. I love to see it. I think it's super cool. Props to Swan again. Shout out Brandon Quidham uh, and, and the Swan team. I don't know if you guys have been seeing Brecky uh, on Twitter carving that marble Killing sculpture. It. Super Brecky. sick. Yeah. I it's, love it. Sold for half a coin. It was it a half a coin? I think last I checked, no, or I think it was like 15 grand. Uh, yeah. Last time I checked, but yeah, Crazy. watching him do that from. Uh, just all his tweets are like, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. This is this sculpture. This is this structure. This is the history on this. And then he's like posting himself, like carving everything. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, shout It's out super to cool, man. It, it is good stuff. And yeah. I, I agree with Tyler. Shout out with that whole Swan team. They have like an aggressive approach to, to social media. They spotted mm. that very early on. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't really use, I haven't used Clubhouse in months or whatever, but I still remember very early on, they were wiping the floor in Clubhouse. Oh, I totally. Mean, like the Swan... The Swan team was on like 24-7. There was no way in hell you were missing anything in Bitcoin happening. And Crazy. they're really aggressive on Twitter as well. Uh, not in a bad way. I know aggressive seems to get a term. They're doing yeah. it smart. So, yeah. yeah, shout out to them. I mean, Patriots have Bitcoin. Uh, yeah. I agree with the athlete stuff that Tyler was talking about. That's right. Uh, we had the luxury and, the, and the, the good gracious to be able to uh, listen to CJ Wilson talk about similar things mm-hmm. um, and, and being able to, you know, yeah, these athletes being able to store their energy when really as soon as they're done, they get tossed to the curb. Yeah, yeah o- Okung was saying in the future, we don't care about scores. We care about how many players are DCAing. And, you know, mm. they're getting their game checks every Sunday. And, right. you know, we're seeing Bitcoin come off exchanges. Like, that's going to be amazing. Yeah, so so we're getting there for sure. Yeah. Tyler, what do you say to someone who says you don't really hold your keys if they're not in your head? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I tell him to go uh, go run up against the Patriots linemen and get a concussion, and then we'll see who's holding keys. Uh, True concussion, ooh. yeah, a lot of failure points, the dementia, the, all these things. Yeah, good that's point. a bad idea. Good point. Good yeah, point. you have both, but Tyler always got the good points yeah, there. I like it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is going to be uh, the very first episode of 2022. This is going to have the whole new rebranding package. Um, I very thankful of course that you're the lead off to that but I guess it's natural to ask so we can look back at this and have some type of recorded you know situation what do you think is happening in Bitcoin in 2022 oh looking into 2022 I think uh, I think the idea of self-custody is going to be on the front of everyone's minds. I think that it's not, it's no longer going to be a fringe practice. Not that it is now, but it's so easy to go on Coinbase and then buy Bitcoin. Um, but I think we're going to see a massive exodus uh, of Bitcoin from exchanges uh, held by individuals. I think we're going to see uh, more companies take the leap towards uh, legal tender. I, that's probably a big shot to call, but uh, El Salvador did it. There's no reasons that other countries can't do the same thing. Um, Starbucks. And McDonald's out there, like nah. they're already implementing. I'm just saying, like on a corporate national level, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the sure. infrastructure is there. Yeah, they got it down. So they have. Why can't it out. why can't you not cookie cutter that into you know into uh, another country nearby and you know learn from? Uh, you see, that's the other thing that I think is very interesting with the whole El Salvador legal tender thing, like. It's also a case study, right? So there's improvements to be made. The next country to do it can maybe learn from the implementation flaws or whatever happened with El Salvador and constantly be improving on it to the point where, you know, somebody in Japan can walk in and scan a lightning invoice. Like that, it's going to happen. Maybe not 2022, but uh, but that's going to happen. Um, otherwise, in 2022, I think we're going to see a lot more appreciation for Bitcoin and a delineation of Bitcoin and then everything else. Um, I think everything else is a random walk. I think it's just a casino. Um, But I think Bitcoin is generational wealth is going to take hold a lot stronger than it already has been. Uh, Hopefully more treasury allocations, more people, you know, getting scheduling time on my calendar, setting up, uh, setting up private keys and holding generational wealth. Yeah, I agree with that. I like it, man. Couldn't say it any better. You got anything to fill in there? Nah. Nah, Tyler. I appreciate you, man. If you want to give, you know, a call to action, I know you gave the following you on Twitter as a call to action. If you want to give, you know, concierge onboarding as a plug-in, please feel free here. Uh, now's your shot, brother. Yeah, awesome. Well, and thank you both for, for having me on, listening to me basically ramble. I know I, I, I'm I on with an hour with clients all day, so I'm talking a bunch and I tend to, you know, get into some, some flows. So I appreciate both of your time. Um, Twitter, I do threads as, as much as possible. I really want to do a good Taproot one, talking about how Taproot's going to you know, impact multi-sig. Um, so more stuff for me in the future. My Twitter handle is at clockwork underscore prior. Um, always be updating your priors on things. Try to do it, make it a normal part of your kind of life philosophy. 
Um, and then I definitely want to plug uh, not only Unchained, uh, Unchained Capital, all the services we provide, but most notably our concierge service. Um, it's honestly, uh, through direct experience, hundreds of onboardings, uh, everybody, software engineers just out of college, 75-year-old couples and everyone in between, come learn private key management. It's fun. Plus, we drop $1,000 worth of Bitcoin into your vault when you're done with the setup. Um, it really, really, really pays dividends. Um, so can't plug that enough, uh, our concierge service at Unchained Capital. So go to unchained.com uh, if you want to learn more about that. And yeah, thank you both again for having me on. Oh, yeah, you're very welcome. I you know, have to double down on that. This is life-changing information that you can learn in a nice, friendly, um, easy environment, right? No stress, low stress environment. So I highly double on that. I appreciate that. Um, guys, I appreciate you guys as always. If you follow us and watch these videos on YouTube, I hope you guys appreciate this new reskin and this new rebrand provided by Ben here. I appreciate that for sure. Hit the bell, hit the subscribe button, leave us a comments. It's just the way YouTube works. They're always changing the rules. We want this information, this information to float up and be able to get to as many people. If you listen to this show, we're on we're on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. But the way we keep this show ad free is that we support Podcast 2.0 here. So if you have Fountain app or if you have any of these other, you know, stress, uh, streamable apps, definitely check us out on there and show them some love so you never have to listen to five, six, ten minutes worth of advertisement. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the comments on the podcasting platforms. It works the same exact way. These algorithms are pretty similar. We appreciate you guys as always. Ben, I appreciate you as appreciate always. You, bro. Tyler, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for this. All right. And we'll see you guys next week. Later. Awesome. See you guys. Thank you. All opinions expressed by Jose and Ben or any of the guests on this show are solely their opinion and their opinion alone. Their opinions do not reflect the opinions of any other sponsors or other parties involved in the recording of this show. Do not treat any opinion expressed by Jose and Ben as a specific endorsement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy. Their expressions of their opinion on this show is purely for informational purposes. Enjoy the show! All the opinions expressed by Jose and Ben or any of the guests on this show are solely their opinion and their opinion alone. Their opinions do not reflect the opinions of any of the sponsors or other parties involved in the recording of this show. Do not treat any opinion expressed by Jose and Ben as a specific endorsement to make a particular investment or follow a particular strategy. Their expressions of their opinion on this show is purely for informational purposes. Enjoy the show!